Hello, hello, welcome. It's the one and only 5B Transformations. Um, so we're going to talk about MBTI. Um, we're going to talk about two personality types that are very, very powerful types. I want to compare the ENFJ and the ESFJ. Now, both types can come off very similar because they both lead with extroverted feeling. And what I think is so cool about this comparison, and I'm going to be doing a bunch of comparison videos and a bunch of more MBTI videos because the MBTI course is now available. Um, I break down the depth of it. It's called MBTI Magic, Understanding the Magic of MBTI and Your Personality Type. Um, I go through all 16 personality types in depth. I also talk about the gift and hidden power that you have. Um, and I also discuss just some very unique aspects of viewing MBTI. And it's basically meant to teach you in a quick way how to understand MBTI the way that um, I, I understand it and the way I'm able to kind of see the functions, understand how the types operate. You learn all of that information. So with that being said, let's get back to the ENFJs and the ESFJs. And we can also, if we want, call this the FE extroverted feeling group, you know, because they both lead with extroverted feeling. Now, one thing you got to understand about extroverted feeling is it is the function that leads emotion. It is the feeling that guides emotion. It is um, using emotion to create an effect, whether good, bad. In most cases, it's good. Like people are using extroverted feeling because they want to influence people to operate in a way that they see is good. Uh, extroverted feeling is all about harmony. It wants the external group to have harmony. It's less focused on its internal harmony. It actually gains internal harmony by uh, the group in the, you know, yeah, the group feeling harmonies. So that's key. So when you're dealing with a type like this, or if you are a type like this, um, extroverted feeling is gonna be a huge function for you. And both types have to, they're naturally meant to influence the environment. But where they differ is in how they influence the environment and what they're using to influence the environment. And here's what I mean. ESFJs, they have introverted sensing second. So they are much more prone to go to the past. These are the types of people who are always giving you old stories, old uh, principles that were learned. And when we say old, we don't want to degrade the power of what old is. It's wisdom, it's something generational, it's lasted. So this knowledge is proven in the sensory world. They're using knowledge. These are these could be old folk tales, um, real life stories. In most cases, they're using real life stories, things that they saw, things that happened in the past. You know what I mean? And so, ESFJs are pulling from the past in order to create their future. What's very interesting about them, though, is they have intuition third. They have extroverted intuition. So they're actually very curious people to be sensors. I would say out of all the sensing types, they're one of the most, like in terms of the sensing dominant types, they are the, the most curious, one of the top curious types. Um, because they're constantly looking at their experiences but they're using these experiences to move forward, to project what's gonna happen in the future. And they use extroverted feeling to bring people along. Now they have introverted thinking forth. So they have that ability to do one task at a time. You know what I mean? And be present and be very much more moment to moment. Um, even though they are judging types, they still, they still have this level of being able to uh, stay focused on work, you know what I mean? Um, one task at a time, but they are curious and they can go into different ideas. You know what I mean? Their feelings can put them into different spaces so they can be moved emotionally for like, they can be playful, they can be fun. You know, most ESFJs are very fun, playful. Um, another thing is they generally don't take themselves as serious as the ENFJ would. Some ESFJs can, but ESFJs can carry themselves very serious and they can look very presentable. They know how to play the part. They're very good with operating in each environment correctly so that you look the right way because they can always revert back to 
how are you supposed to look in the space? And that matters to them. You know, they want to make sure that they look the part um, wherever they go, because that extroverted feeling wants to give a good effect to the environment, it wants to be harmonious to the culture of what's going on. Now, where ENFJs differ is they're more so forward focused. They don't they don't really look to the past a lot at all. Um, and then you have some ENFJs that develop that skill better than others, and they actually can be pretty solid at it. But in actuality, ENFJs, they have extroverted feeling, they're moving the environment, but they want to move it forward based on what they see in the moment. They want to more so be present and move people in a direction that they want to move them in without having to rely on the past as much. They want to move with their intuition. They want to move people forward. They want to move people here, move people there, tell people things that will get them moving in a direction. Um, so they both are influential, but influential in different ways. Like an ENFJ is the type that's going to get you motivated. You know, you talk to an ENFJ, they can motivate you to want to work out, motivate you to want to get money, motivate you to want to do something. They're like, yeah, what you doing with this? You should try to do this. They're always giving you ideas of things that you can do better. One thing to keep in mind is introverted intuition. For the way I begin to realize it more and more is that it is a perfection function. Like it's all about the imaginary, the vision. It envisions things and holds it to a high regard. Like, and it can lift things up and see what matters. So ENFJs can see like what really matters for somebody or what they need to do or what will get them from point A to point B, the essence of what will do that. And they want to catapult people in that direction. Um, and that's what makes them natural leaders, you know? Uh, so both types are leaders and both types, even ENFJs, they have that introverted thinking. So once again, they can hone in on something, you know what I mean? They can be consistent. They, you know, so that's big. And both types are very independent minded in the sense that they're going to stick to their guns. They both have introverted thinking. They're not trying to shift their thinking too much. They more so rely on shifting the environment emotionally, you know, but when it comes to the things that they think about, they're not as adaptable as let's say types that have extroverted thinking. So that's kind of the give and take. Even they're very influential. Um, they're very fun and adaptable, but they can be stubborn at times, both types, but they're stubborn in different ways. The ESFJ wants to hang on to what it already knows or what it thinks. And the ENFJ wants to hang on to what it thinks is the best next thing to do. So, you know, the reality is extroverted thinking is their weakest function. So both types, one thing they can work on is, you know, you don't want to be one of those types of people who want to influence everybody, but then you can't be influenced because then it's an imbalance and you don't want to be imbalanced in that regard. Because then in that case, you're going to end up being that person that gives off narcissistic tendencies because you want to tell everybody what to do, but you don't want to hear anybody tell you what to do. So you have to remain balanced. You have to open up that extroverted thinking that, you know what I mean? That, you know, which is, all right, let me take into account what this person is saying logically and see if it makes sense. Now, the best way to do that is, you know, they tend to do that with people they trust. Uh, extroverted feeling is one of those functions where if you're like somebody they trust, they see you as family or somebody that they really can rely on, they'll begin to open up more and more to the thoughts that you have to bring because there's an emotional level of respect there. But if they don't have much respect for you, um, they, they, they really can care less what you have to say, uh, it, but they can still be playful and communicate with you and share their ideas. And that's one thing about this type. They're not stingy with knowledge. Um, ESFJs, definitely. They are willing to give a wealth of knowledge away. That, that's what makes them very unselfish people. They tend to live by good principles. Um, and for them, it's all about, you know, not getting in your own way. For ESFJs, it's about confidence. And that's one thing I'll say for both of these types. You know, they operate at their best when they're confident and self-assured and believe in themselves. But they really are going to be their best if they put in time to learn more and more um, and tap more and more into those lower functions like extroverted thinking, because uh, the more knowledge you get, the more influential you can become. So allow that to be your motivation to learn more, you know, about what other people think, because that's going to broaden your thought perspective. And then you can be more influential and get back to what you do best, which is 
that extroverted feeling and guiding people in the direction. So what I'll say just to not keep this too long is like both types are powerful, powerful types, the most influential types. Both types tend to be very successful, very, um, what's the word? They just can move through life with a certain zest and vigor that inspires people and it makes them very likable. They're very magnetic uh, people. And with this power that you have, you got to make sure to, you know, hold that with the right kind of responsibility. You got to make sure to really do your knowledge, keep learning, check yourself. That's where introverted feeling comes in. You got to tap into how you feel because sometimes you might be guiding people in a direction that isn't the right one, but you don't want to go back because you're introverted sensing. You don't want to go back and you're extroverted thinking. You don't want to hear what anybody else thinks. You just want to go forward, right? Because you're hanging on to whatever you think. So the work for you is going to be opening up perspectives, learn more information. And ESFJs are actually can be very good at this. They have to utilize extroverted intuition. Extroverted intuition is the key for ESFJs to amass more and more knowledge. The more and more knowledge they amass, the more powerful they become. Um, for ENFJs, you know, you have extroverted sensing. So for you, it's about getting in the right environments, talking to the right people in your environment. You know, they're more so going to want to talk to somebody face to face, an ENFJ. And so they got to have the right people around them, because if they're too isolated in their extroverted sensory space, it's going to skew their their perspectives, potentially, because they're going to be just going off of what they think is the best thing to do next. But you got to go back to get the context so that you can move forward even, you know, even more powerfully. So for you, you got to keep good people around you. And if there are no good people around you, go put yourself in a space where you can be around new people, get more information and just keep learning. So that's my uh, comparison video for both types, man. I had these amazing comparison videos um, where I was showing the videos and everything of different celebrities. So you can see, but they freaking blocked my video because I guess it was some copyright issue. So with that being said, um, I'm gonna just be talking. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna find some videos to do comparisons, but I just gotta vet them a little bit more so that they don't be messing up my channel. All right. So look, man, this is uh, what we're doing. Look at the schedule today. I had to drop the MBTI video for y'all. We we starting this schedule uh, Wednesday. I'm gonna have some uh, some fire fire info to talk about your inner power. Also talking about um, narcissism. You know what I mean? And just making sure to keep the narcissist up off you because you got to stay powerful and all of this relates to the mind i mean honestly if you understand yourself and other people more that's mbti that's going to make you very powerful and influential and you know just well-rounded if you understand narcissists and know how to keep them away from you that's going to take care of your enemies in your life you know what i mean you understand the dating and relationship information you're going to have powerful relationships you know what i mean and that also applies to business because a lot of these things translate and then the pyramidian course is going to be making sure that you put it all together and also have the mental uh, secrets and the power within and tools in place so that you can operate as your most powerful self. Um, and you put it all together, man, you're going to be a monster out there in the game. So shout out to everybody. Go to 5dtransformations.com. Go get the new MBTI course while it's at the price that it is now. I'm going to keep it there for 10 more people. The next 10 people that get it, once they get it, the price is going to go up. Because this course really is worth way more than I have done before. It is very informative, man. And it's very powerful. So appreciate you listening. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.